In this Blender beginner tutorial, I will show you how to use soft body physics. So soft body physics can be used for many different simulations in Blender, such as rubber objects or jello objects, and even cloth and clay objects. Basically any type of object which generally retains its shape, but that can be morphed and changed, like rubber or jello or clay. And so in this tutorial to teach you the basics of soft body physics, we're going to be creating three different simulations. So we're going to be creating some physics simulations for some rubber balls and some rubber ducks and some jello cubes. But there's many other types of simulations that you could create with soft body physics. And if you'd like to download the free project files of this tutorial, then I've made the project files free on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. You can find those with the links in the description. And in the project files, you'll also get access to the Rubber Duck 3D model that I'm going to be using in this video. So if you'd like to, you can download the free project files and use the Rubber Duck 3D model in this video. And if you'd like to help support this channel and send me a little tip, then you can throw a few dollars into the price box on Gumroad before purchasing, and that's a great way to send me a little tip and help support this channel. And you can also help to support this channel monthly by checking out my Patreon page. And some great ways to help support the channel here on YouTube is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on that join button. And you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube to send me a little tip if you enjoy this video. Alright, so the first simulation that I'm going to be creating is the rubber balls. And I have my screencast keys right down here in the corner if you want to see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'm going to press the A key to select everything and I'll hit X and let's click on delete. And then to add the rubber balls, I'm going to press shift A. I'll go here to mesh and I'm going to start by adding an icosphere. And then right above me, if you click on the little add icosphere settings, just click on this to open it up. I want to turn the subdivisions up a little bit. So I'm going to turn these subdivisions up to four and then I can close the add icosphere settings. Now why I want more geometry on the object is because if the object is more detailed then the soft body simulation will be more detailed because the simulation uses the geometry of the objects to actually change the shape of the object. So if you have a very low poly object, like for instance a cube, if I go into edit mode of this cube, you can see this cube isn't very detailed at all, and so there's not going to be much detail in the simulation. Now if you do want to simulate something like a cube, you totally can, and we will be creating some jello cubes later in this video, but if you want to use an object like this which is very low poly, then you can go into edit mode and you can press the A key to select the entire mesh. Then you can just use the object context menu and you can click on the subdivide button, and so it's going to subdivide it and add more geometry in the faces and you can just continue to subdivide it as much as you want. But I'm just going to delete this cube because for now I'm going to use this icosphere. Now when modeling to the real life scale in Blender, the default primitive objects in Blender are a little bit higher than an average human. So this is a really giant ball. So I'm going to scale this object down and I'm just going to type in 0.1 and then enter. And then I can zoom in here and I just want to press control A and I will apply the scale. So this is now the object's new default size. And also using the object context menu, I can shade the object smooth. So I now want to add the soft body physics. So there's two ways to do this. You can click over here on the modifier properties and then click on add modifier and you can see there's a physics column and so you could add the soft body physics right down here. The little icon is like a jellyfish or you could click right down here on the physics properties and then you could just click on the soft body right here. And when you add physics it's going to add it as a modifier. But I'm going to click right over here on the physics properties. Now if you press the space bar to play the animation you can see it starts to fall but then you can see it's kind of just bobbing up and down and it kind of looks like it's hanging in the air. And that is because we have this goal set right here. So the goal is going to keep it in the same spot, although it will bob up and down because the gravity is pulling it down. So I want to uncheck the goal and then I can just click on this button here to go back to the starting and then you can click on this button to play the animation or just hit the space bar to play. And now you can see that it's just going to fall all the way down. So 
we now need some sort of object that the ball can collide with. So I'm just going to bring this object up on the Z axis. I'll just stick it right there. And then I can press Shift A and let's go to Mesh and I can add a plane and then I can just scale this plane up a bit more. Now if I press the space bar to play again, you can see it's just going to go through the plane. And that is because we also need to add physics to this plane to tell the sphere to interact with the plane. So I'm going to select the plane and we want to click right here on collision. So we're going to add collision physics. So I can now go back to the starting and then I can play the animation and it's now going to interact with that plane. Now the problem right now is it's kind of just acting like paper or cloth and it's not really retaining any of its shape. It's basically just flopping down and then becoming really flat. You can also see that the vertices are going through each other so it's not even colliding with itself. So to make the simulation a bit more realistic, we can start by turning on the self collision. So just click on the self collision. Now I want the simulation to repeat every 50 frames just so that I can keep it playing and then I can see what's happening. So right here on the end frame, I'm going to set this to 50, hit enter, and now if I press the space bar to play, you can see it's going to go 50 frames and then jump back to the starting. So now I can just watch this looping and see what it's doing. So now that we've turned on the self collision, it kind of looks like a rubber ball that's been deflated. So the ball falls and and then it just kind of sits right here and because we have the self collision turned on it's not going through itself so that does look a bit more realistic but there still really isn't any pressure inside so what i'm going to do is tell the simulation to bend less so what i can do is open up the edges right here click on the little arrow to open up the edges and you can see that we have this bending right here so i can just turn the bending up to like one and now we can watch this and now you can see it's a little bit more thick it kind of looks like a thicker rubber and it's not falling down quite as much so i could turn the bending up even more and actually I'm gonna turn the bending right here all the way up to the max of 10 and now if I play this you can see it's retaining its shape so now it looks like a rubber ball with some air inside now I'm not going to be using it in this simulation, but I did want to also show you this plasticity. And the plasticity is going to keep the object in the same shape after it's been squished down. So if you were taking like a ball of clay and you just dropped the ball of clay or threw it down on a table, it would kind of splat on the table and it would retain that shape. It wouldn't pop back up. Whereas this here, this kind of looks like a rubber ball and so it kind of bounces back up. So if I turn the plasticity up to like one, the rubber ball is now going to keep more of its shape. And I want to make this much more strong, so I'm going to turn the plasticity to like 50. So I can now go back to the starting and play this, and you can see it's going to fall down, and then it's kind of going to keep its shape. So I don't really want to use this for a rubber ball, but if you were making some sort of clay object, or an object which kind of splats down and then keeps its shape, you could use the plasticity. I'm going to turn the plasticity back to zero for this rubber ball. Now there's also the pull values and the push values, and these values are going to make it a bit more bouncy, and it's going to make it retain more of its shape. So for instance, on the push and pull values, I could turn this both to 0.9. So let's start by just turning the push to 0.9, and then I can go back here and play this. And you can see it is a little bit more laggy in the viewport, but you can see now the rubber ball is really bouncing. We could also turn the pull up as well. So I could turn the pull up to like a 0.9, and now you can see it's really quite bouncy. So now this is kind of acting like a bouncy ball. Or if I wanted to turn this down, I could turn the pull maybe to just like a 0.2, and then we can watch this. You can see it goes down way more. So this is like very rubbery. You can see how much it goes down, but it still pops up. And then also this push here, I could turn this to like a 0.2 as well. And you can see by turning the push value down, it's not nearly as bouncy. So because this is a rubber ball, I do want it to be pretty bouncy. So I'm going to turn the pull value to like a 0.6. And then this push value, I'm going to turn to like a 0.9. Actually, this pull value, I think I might turn it up a little bit more to like a 0.7, just so that it's a little bit more bouncy. And there we go. So we now have a nice bouncy rubber ball. Now, if you want to make this rubber ball even more stiff there's actually a stiffness value so right down here you can see there's a stiffness and I can just check mark this and if I open it up there is this shear value so if you turn the shear value all the way to one it's going to use lots of the stiffness and so you can see this looks much more stiff so this is now acting much more like maybe a basketball or a soccer ball because it is really retaining its shape or I could turn the stiffness shear value way down maybe to like a 0.2 and it's just going to be a little bit more stiff so on the stiffness value I'm just going to leave this at a 0.2 because I think that looks pretty good for a rubber ball. So this simulation is pretty simple so let's make it more interesting by adding more rubber balls. So I'm just going to pause the simulation and I'll click here to jump to the starting and then I can press shift D to duplicate and I can bring this up here and I can even scale this down just to make it a bit smaller. So if I now press the space bar to play you can see it is a little bit more laggy because there is more to simulate but one problem with this simulation is that these two rubber balls are not interacting. So to make them interact 
interact with each other because they are both separate objects, we need to give them collision physics. So I can click on this ball here, click on collision, and then the other rubber ball, I can turn on the collision. So I can go back here to the starting and I can press the space bar to play. And now the simulation is going to be much more laggy because it's having to simulate the collision at every frame, but it is now going to collide with each other. Now there's a few problems with using the collision on multiple objects. One thing is that it's very laggy, it took a long time for this to bake, and then another thing is that sometimes it can kind of mess up the simulation. You can see right here it's really laggy, so I'm waiting it for it to finish, but you can see it's having some problems here where they're going through each other. And it is really quite laggy, and it takes much longer to bake the simulation. So you can add the collision if you have multiple soft body objects that you want to interact. However, there is a better method which I prefer to use. So what I'm going to do is just delete this smaller ball, so I'll click on delete. I can go back here to the starting, and then if I click on this rubber ball, I'm going to click on the X here to delete the collision, but I'm still going to keep the soft body. So what I found to work much better instead is to just duplicate the rubber ball in the object's edit mode. And this way, instead of using the collision physics, which is much more laggy, it'll just use the self collision, which is much faster and has a much better result. So I'm going to hit the tab key to go into edit mode. I'll press the A key to select everything. I can press shift D to duplicate this. I can scale it down and I can add another one by pressing shift D to duplicate and scaling it down. So even though these are all separate rubber balls, they are all within the same object because if I go back to object mode, you can see they're just one object. And so this way, because we have the self collision turned on, they are going to collide with each other. So I can now press the space bar to play and you can see it is a little bit laggy still because we have three different rubber balls, but it's not as laggy as using the other method and you can see the simulation is working much better. So the rubber balls are not going through each other. So I've just let this bake through so you can see it in real time and you can see that looks much better. So I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to make a bunch of different rubber balls. So in edit mode you can press the A key to make sure you deselect everything and then you can hover your mouse over the rubber ball and press the L key to select the linked vertices. I can now press shift D to duplicate and I can scale this and I can just kind of duplicate them and make a few different rubber balls here and there. All right so now I can hit the space bar to play and you can see because there is so much geometry it's actually acting very laggy. So instead of trying to preview the simulation in the viewport, I'm going to bake the simulation instead. So right up here you can see there's this cache, and if I click on the cache we can actually bake the simulation. So I'm just going to bake it to 50 frames, so if you go here to the simulation end, I can just type in 50 and then hit enter, and then you can just click on the bake button. Now if you have multiple objects, then you'll want to click on the bake all dynamics instead, but because I just have one object, I can just click on the bake button. But if I had two different objects, I would want to click on the bake all dynamics instead. Because if you click on the bake button here, it's only going to bake the object which is selected. So I'm just going to delete this other object. I can click here and then I can just click on the bake button. And so now we have to wait for it to load up. You can see it is taking a little while, but once it's finished, we'll be able to watch it in real time with no lag. All right, so the simulation is finished. So I'll just press the space bar to play the simulation. And then if for some reason you want to change some of the simulation settings, you can see the settings are all grayed out so you can just click on the delete bake button or if you have multiple objects you can click on the delete all bakes and then you can change any of the values here and then you can rebake the simulation. Now if you want to jump to the next simulation that we're going to be doing in this video then you can check the timestamps in the description but real quick I'm going to show you how to add a few basic materials and some basic lighting to this scene. So I'm just going to click here on the world properties and then here on the yellow dot next to color I'll click on this and I will choose environment texture and then I'll click on open to open up an HDRI. And I'm going to be downloading the Hamburg Canal, and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to download it. And I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So I'll click on this and click on open image. And I'll also provide this HDRI in the free project files of this tutorial. So I'll click on open image, and I can hold down the Z button and move my mouse into the rendered view. And I'm using Cycles Render, but of course you could totally use Eevee if you want to. And then I can also click on the ground object here and I will click on new to add a new material and this object here I could just maybe make like a gray color and maybe make it slightly blue make it a little bit darker and then also right here if I go down to the roughness I could just turn the roughness down so it's a bit more reflective then I can select the rubber balls here I'll click on new and I can just rename this to rubber and then to make a very basic rubber object I'm gonna click here on the base color and I'm gonna maybe make this like a light blue color something like that and then also here on the roughness I could turn the roughness down to maybe like a 0.2 so it's kind of shiny. I could also maybe make the base color a little bit darker and a bit more saturated.
saturated. And then if you want to be able to see through the objects a little bit, you could go down here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger and you can turn the transmission up. So I could turn the transmission up maybe to like a 0.6 or a 0.7. And that way now the rubber looks a little bit transparent. And now we kind of have a nice rubber object, which is a little bit see through. And then because these are all the same objects, if you want to add multiple colors for all the different rubber balls, you can hit the tab key to go into edit mode. And in edit mode, you can see the balls are going to come back up to their default position. So I'll just go up here and then I can press the L key with my mouse hovered over some of the rubber balls. So I'll just select these three. And then what I can do here in the material slots is click on the plus here to add a new material. I can click on the drop down here and I can select the rubber material. And then I want to click on this button here and this is going to duplicate the material. And I can just rename this to like rubber red. And then with those objects selected, I can click on the assign button. And so now this is a separate material. So here on the base color, I could just maybe make it like a red color and make it a bit brighter. And then if I go back to object mode, you can now see that we have a different material for the rubber, but they're all within the same object. And so you can just add a few more materials to these rubber balls. So then of course, if you wanted to, you could add a camera and do some animation and render this out to a final video. But I'm not going to be covering all of that in this video because I want to keep this video topic on the soft body simulations. So let's jump to the next simulation. All right, so the next object that I'm going to be simulating is the Rubber Duck 3D model. And if you'd like to download this Rubber Duck 3D model, then you can download the free project files with the links in the description, or you can also model your own Rubber Duck or just get whatever 3D model you want to simulate. And if you'd like to help support this channel, then you can throw a few dollars into the price box on Gumroad before downloading, and that's a great way to send me a little tip and help support this channel. So if you select the duck model and click right over here to go to the physics properties, I want to click here to add the soft body physics. And then I actually forgot to add a timeline, so if you don't have a timeline right down here, you can click right up here when the crosshair appears, and you can click and drag down, and that is going to split the window. And then if you click right here to change the editor type, I'm going to change this to the timeline. So I can now click here to go back to the starting, and then I can press the play button or hit the space bar to play the timeline. And you can see just as before with the rubber balls, it is kind of staying in the very center point, and that is because of this goal right here, so we want to uncheck the goal, and then if I go back to the starting and play this the rubber duck just falls and then I want this simulation to repeat like every 50 frames so right here on the end frame I can just type in 50 and now if I play this I can just let it continue to play and it'll just come back to the starting so I now want to add a ground object that the duck can bump into so I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna go here to mesh and I'll add a plane and I can bring this plane down and I can go back to the starting and I'm going to click on the duck model and I'm actually going to bring it up a bit. And then if I click here on the plane, I want to click on the collision. So I can press the space bar to play and you can see now the duck model is just kind of falling down and it's kind of acting like some paper and it's kind of just crumpling into nothing. So to make the duck model look more realistic, let's click on the duck model and then we want to turn on the self collision and this way it's going to collide with itself. And you can see now it is colliding with itself. So now it kind of looks like it has a little bit of thickness. So right now this duck looks like it's made out of a thin rubber, kind of like a beach ball material and it doesn't have any air pressure inside of it. So I want to make the rubber material look thicker and that way it'll retain more of its shape. So to do this, we're going to open up the edges right here, and then we are going to change the bending. So I can turn the bending to one, and you can see it's already retaining much more of its shape. And I think I'll turn the bending all the way up to like 10. 10 is the max, and you can see now it's much more rubbery. Now I want to make this more stiff because it is still too rubbery. So I'm going to click on the stiffness value right here. And on the stiffness shear value, I'll just leave this at one. And now this is starting to act much more like a rubber duck. And we now have this nice bouncy rubber duck. Now to make the simulation more interesting, I want to have multiple ducks which are kind of banging into each other. And as I mentioned earlier in this tutorial, what you can do if you duplicate the objects and you have two different objects that you want to collide with each other, is you just need to make sure these objects have the collision physics. So as well as adding the rigid body, you could also add the collision physics to these two duck objects. However, I found that the simulation is much more laggy and it doesn't actually look quite as accurate. So what I'm going to do instead is duplicate the ducks in edit mode and that way they're 
are all going to be one single object and so they will instead use the self collision feature to collide with each other. So I'm going to delete this duck model and this duck model here I'm going to go into edit mode and I'll press the A key to select everything and you can press shift D to duplicate and I can kind of rotate this make another duck over here. I can duplicate this again and maybe rotate this up here. So now we have three different rubber ducks. So I can go back to object mode and go here to the starting and then play the simulation again. Now when I play this you can see it's very laggy because there is so much geometry that it needs to simulate. So I'm going to be baking the simulation instead. So if you just select the object you can click on the cache right here and on the cache you can see there is a start frame and an end frame. So I'm going to set this to 100 frames and also right here on the end frame on the timeline I can turn this to 100 frames. And then you can just click on the bake button or if you have multiple objects you can click on the bake all dynamics. I'll just click on the bake button and I'll come back when this is finished. All right so it simulated half of the simulation so I just hit the escape key to cancel the simulation. And we can now play this and we can watch the simulation. And you can see the ducks are colliding with each other. Now I also want to show you how you can change the speed of the simulation because maybe you want to make a slow motion simulation so that you can see much more of the detail. So if you want to make the simulation faster or slower I can first click on delete bake and then I can click on the simulation tab here and just open this up and there is a speed value and this is pretty self-explanatory so if the speed value is set to 2 it's going to be double the speed or I could like set this to like a 0.5 and now it's only going to be half the speed. So I'm just going to change it to a 0.5 and this way it'll kind of look like a slow motion animation and I'll be able to see more of the detail in the animation. So then what you can do is just click on the bake button again and I'll just wait for this to finish. And the simulation is finished so I can just watch through this and you can see it's much slower now. So it definitely looks like a slow motion animation because you can see how much air time the duck actually has. Now I also thought it would be cool to add some other objects which the ducks can collide with. So I'm going to go back to the starting here and if you want to you can add some other objects down here. So what I'm going to do is press shift A. I'm going to go to mesh and I'm going to add a cube and then I will tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to scale this cube way down and I can also scale it down on the Z axis and then I can scale it up on the Y axis just like that. So now we have like a basic plank. And then on this object here, I'm going to click on collision to add collision physics. So then I could go to side view and I could kind of rotate this object over and move it over here to make a basic slide object. Then I can select the duck models and I could move them up here, maybe even scale this up so it's a bit bigger. And then I could maybe add a few more objects. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to rotate this one back and I can rotate it to the side here and just make a few objects that the simulation can collide with. I'm also going to select the duck models and I will go into edit mode and then you can press the L key with your mouse hovered over the duck model and I'll press shift D to duplicate and I can maybe put another duck model up here. And then before I bake this, this, one thing that I found with these other type of objects is that if the objects aren't thick enough then there's going to be some issues where the soft body will go through the objects. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I can select this face here and I can extrude this face out to make it a bit thicker. And I can also do that on a few of the other objects. So I'm just going to make these objects a bit thicker. I can also scale this object up to make it thicker. So then I can select the rubber ducks object and I can click on delete bake and then I can bake the simulation again. And the simulation simulation is finished and we can watch the ducks fall down the slides and kind of bump into the other objects. So that's the simulation of the ducks so let's now do the jello cubes simulation. Alright so to create the jello cubes I've just opened up a new blender file and I'm going to select everything and then let's delete everything. So I'm going to now press shift A, let's go to mesh and I can add a cube. Now when modeling to the real life scale in blender the default primitive objects are a little bit higher than an average human so this is a really giant jello cube. So I'm going to scale this cube down by 0.1 and then hit enter. So now this is a better size. Also press control A and then I can apply the scale. So this is now the object's new default size. So I'm going to bring the cube up on the Z axis and then I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. You can also double tap the R key to enable the trackball rotation and I'll just give it kind of a random rotation. And then to add the soft body physics we just need to click right here on the physics properties and you can add the soft body physics. And then I can press the space bar to play the timeline and you can see it just kind of wobbles back and forth. So that is because I need to uncheck the goal right here so we can uncheck the goal and then I can play this and you can see now it is falling. So I need some sort of object that it can interact with so I'm just going to add a plane. So I can press shift A, I'll go here to mesh and I can add a plane and I can scale the plane up. 
Now again, if we play the simulation, the cube is just going to go through the plane, and that's because with the plane selected, we need to add the collision physics, and now if I play this, you can see the cube is going to fall on the plane. But the problem with this is that the cube doesn't have very much topology, it is very simple, and so the simulation doesn't have much geometry to work with. So I'm going to go into edit mode of this cube, and then I'm going to use the object context menu, and I'll click on subdivide. And I'm going to do that two more times, so using the object context menu, subdivide, and again, Again, let's subdivide this so now it has a lot more geometry so if I go back to object mode I can play this and you can see it now just kind of crumples down so what I want to do is click right here to turn on the self collision and this way it's going to collide with itself so now it just kind of flops down and it kind of looks like it's made out of cloth and so I want to make it so it retains more of its shape so it acts more like jello so to do that we can open up the edges right here and then we can turn up this bending so I'm going to turn the bending just to a value of one and now if I play this it's still going to bend a lot but you can see it's retaining more of its shape. Let's also use the object context menu and shade the object smooth just so that it looks a little bit nicer. Now to make this a bit more stiff we can just turn on the stiffness value so just like we've done before we can open up the stiffness value right here. So now if I go back to the starting and play this you can see it's looking much more like jello. Now I do want to make it a little bit more bouncy so I can use this push value right here. So I'm going to turn the push value up to like a 0.7. Now if I go back to the starting here and play this you can see it's going to be a bit more bouncy and now it's actually kind of rotating a bit so i can go back here to the starting and play this again you can see it's even more bouncy now i want the jello cube to actually be a little bit less bouncy and i want it to be pushed down a bit more when it hits the plane so right here on this push value i can turn this to like a 0.4 and now if i go back here to the starting and play this you can see it's going to fall down a bit more and it's not going to be quite as bouncy and also here on the pull value i could also just try turning this down to like a 0.4 and that looks a little bit better. Now you can see here on the edges it looks a little bit low quality and that is because this cube doesn't actually have that much geometry. So what I'm going to do is click right over here on the modifier properties and you can see we have the soft body modifier. So I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm going to add a bevel modifier and make sure the bevel modifier is after the soft body so that the bevel is just applied after the simulation. So now I want to turn this amount down, so I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to drag this amount and I'm going to make it a very small number. And also here on the segments I can turn this up to like 2. So now you can see it has a bit more detail there on the edges. And so now I can play through this and see how that looks. Now the bevel modifier has a limit method and right now it's set to angle. And so what this is going to do is it's only going to add a bevel where there is a certain angle. And it's going to be this angle right here. But I only want a bevel here on the edges, I don't really want a bevel here when the jello is being deformed. So here on this angle I'm going to turn this angle up really high to like an 80 and this way now you can see it's basically just going to be there on the edges. So now I can just play that and see how that is looking. And then also to make it look just a little bit higher quality and to be able to see a bit more detail I'm going to click on add modifier and I can also add the subdivision surface modifier and then I'm going to turn the viewport and render levels just to 1. So you can see here it is without the subsurf and then here it is with the subsurf. So now it just looks a bit higher quality but the bevel modifier and the subsurf modifier aren't going to interact with the soft body simulation because the soft body simulation has come first. And so the modifiers work from top to bottom. So it'll apply the first modifier and then it will do the next one and then the next one. And then just like I talked about before, if you want to have multiple jello cubes, then instead of duplicating the objects, I found that it works much better if you keep all of these objects in the same object. So instead of duplicating this jello cube in object mode, you can go into edit mode and you can select all the vertices and you can press shift D to duplicate and then you can just kind of rotate this and you can have multiple jello cubes within the same object. So I'll just make a few different jello cubes and then I can play this and we'll just let that simulate. And there we go, so we now have some nice bouncy jello cubes. And if this is acting very laggy when you're trying to bake it in real time in the viewport, then you can of course bake the simulation just like we've done before. So if you click over here on the physics properties, you can open up the cache here and you can set a start frame and an end frame and then you can click on the bake button to bake the simulation. Now there's another soft body option that I want to show you and that is to change the weight or the mass of the object. 
box. So if you click on the object right here, you can see that there is a mass. And so if you turn this down, the objects will be lighter, or if you turn this up, the objects will be heavier. So I'm gonna turn the mass to like a 0.3, just so that these are much lighter. And then I can go back to the starting and I can play this. And because these objects are now lighter, you can see they don't squash down quite as much because there's not as much weight to them. And I think that looks a little bit better. I think that looks a bit more like jello. Or if you wanted to make these objects look more dense, I could turn this mass up. So I could turn this mass up to like a three. And now these jello cubes are very heavy. So you can see when they fall down, they really get squished down quite a bit. I'm going to turn this mass here to just like a 0.3 or maybe just like a 0.4 because I think that's a much better weight for the jello. And then there's one more cool feature that I wanted to show you, and that is the field weights. So if I just scroll right down here, I can open up the field weights tab. So just click on the field weights, and there's a bunch of different field weights that you can play around with. So for instance, there is a gravity. So if I turn this gravity way down to a very small number, now if I play this, you can see they're going to fall very slowly, and it kind of looks like they're on the moon or on some kind of low gravity. And then there's also all of these different forces here. And we don't actually have any of these other forces in our scene, but I can actually add some of the forces in. So just for an example, I'll press shift A, and I'm going to go here to force field, and then I can add the wind. And I'm going to rotate the wind over, and I can scale it down and kind of bring it over here. And then I can go back here to the starting, and I can play this. And you can see now the cubes are going to be affected by the wind. And then if you click back on the jello objects, you can go down here to the field weights, and you can see right down here, there is this wind. So if you wanted the wind to not have any effect over the jello cubes, you could turn the wind down and you can go back to the starting and play this and the wind won't affect the jello. And there's also many other field weights here. And if you press shift A and go here to force field, you can add all the different forces. But I don't really want any wind in this simulation, so I will select the wind object and then I can delete it. Now sometimes with soft body simulations, the soft body objects are going to float a little bit over the plane. If I press one on the numpad to go to front view, if I select the plane, you can see here's the plane and you can see there's actually a little bit of distance between the jello cubes and the plane and so if you're having this problem to fix it you can just select the plane object and then if you go here to the physics properties you can see there is this soft body and cloth and we want to change the outer thickness so here on the outer thickness value I could turn this way down maybe to like a 0.05 and now if I go back here to the starting I can play this again and we'll let that simulate and now that it's finished, if I go here to front view, you can see that it still is floating by a very small amount, but it's very hard to see. You have to zoom in quite a bit to see that. So if you'd like to end the tutorial here, you can, but real quick, I'm going to set up some basic lighting and I'm also going to make a very simple jello material. So let's first click over here on the world properties, and then I'm going to be adding in the same HDRI that I added in at the beginning of this video in the other scene. So here on the world, I can click on the yellow dot here and I can choose environment texture, and then I can click on open. And I'll be using this same HDRI from polyhaven.com. This is the same HDRI that I used earlier in this video. So link will be in the description if you'd like to download this from polyhaven. So I'll click on the HDRI and then click on open image. And I can hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view. And then to create a jello material, I'm going to click right over here to go to the shading workspace. And I can just click here on new to add a new material. So let's take the base color here and I'm going to make this like a brown bright red color and then to make it so you can see through the jello let's turn the transmission value all the way up to one and then here on this roughness we could just turn the roughness value down so I can maybe turn it to like a 0.1 or a 0.2 and then I want to add a little bit of bump to the jello surface so I'll press shift a I'll go to the search and I'm gonna search for a noise texture I'm also gonna press shift a and go to the search and I'm gonna search for the texture coordinate node I can drop this here and I actually want to use the UV of the objects so I can plug the UV into the vector and these cubes were already UV unwrapped on default. And then I can take this factor here, I can plug it into the normal and then I can press shift A and go to the search and I'll search for a bump node and I'll stick the bump node between the noise texture and the principled and I want the noise texture factor to be going into the height value. And then here on the strength value I can turn this way down to maybe just like a 0.1 or even just like a 0.07. And then I can also change some of the noise texture settings so I'll turn the scale up to like a 10. I can also turn the detail up a little bit so I'll turn that up to like a 5. I can also select the ground object and let's click on new here to add a new material and I can turn this down so it's a bit darker. We can also make it like a slight blue color and then I could also turn down the roughness so it's a bit more shiny. 
So that's going to wrap up this tutorial on soft body physics for beginners. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you found it helpful and thank you for watching. And again, you can download the free project files with the links in the description on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And if you enjoy these videos and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then my Gumroad store and my Patreon page are great ways to help support this channel. And if you'd like to learn more physics in Blender, then I'll have some links in the description to some other physics tutorials that I've created, such as rigid body physics, cloth physics, and fluid physics. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you for watching.